Well, uh, the traffic looks pretty good. Uh, got some great trout, so let me ask you about that there truck there. Uh, this was the last brand new Pete I ever bought. This is an 04 model, and we just got done redoing it. I guess we've had it on the road for a couple of years now. It's got a cat in it, an 18-speed, 336 rears, and factory 280 wheelbase. And like I said, we got we had a little over a million miles on it and just decided to break it all down and start all over rather than buy a brand new one. I, I've always liked this one. And it's got uh, Travis made two B's interior, so it's got diamond tuck in it, which is uh, uncommon for a, a stock gear built. There's a lot of guys putting them in because it looks pretty good in here. But yeah, it's my favorite part of the whole truck is when Travis done that for me. Yeah, I'd say uh, the diamond tuck interior is a really good look. And, uh, you know, this morning, I, I of all the people I was expecting to see, you, you're the least of the people that I was expecting to see as I rolled through the parking lot there. <laughs> I'll sneak up on you, right? Yes, sir. A little incognito right there. And uh, so, well, welcome to Florida. Last time I saw you, we were cruising along there in uh, Missouri, just outside of Joplin, Missouri there. Uh, and uh, we got to do a video there. And that video is uh, growing some legs. A lot of people have seen it and appreciate what you've done with that truck. Uh, well, with, with the, the truck that you were driving there in that video. So, uh, you know, what's been going on uh, since uh, since then? Well, I've just been trucking and uh, kind of work with some with a with a guy out of Fort Worth down there. We load out of there quite a bit, take it all over the country, and just happen to be down here in Florida today and. Uh, we'll get unloaded and probably try to reload and go back to the Fort Worth area. So, uh, I guess other than that, we've just been trucking. Uh, that's pretty cool. Well, and that's uh, what everybody else is doing as well, just out there making a living, making an honest living there, getting down the road. Well, we always appreciate what you do too. You kind of show off quite a few nice trucks and since I've met you. I've I kind of watch your your videos here and there, and there's a there's a lot of good owner operators out here yet, and I hope they I hope they get to stay out here. Speaking of being able to stay out here, what are some of the challenges you know throughout the the climate of trucking? You know, with the regulation changes and things, having to bob and weave and all that kind of stuff. What are some of the things that you've had to deal with and overcome? You know, since we're on that topic. Well, I think a lot of it is uh, if you can stay on steady work, it it makes it a little easier to pay the bills. I, if you if you work the broker board a lot, it's it's a little harder to get paid, and it's really hard to find an in-house gig. But all the years that I've drove, it's, I've always been able to you know kind of find work and and stay kind of in-house for the most part. I mean, I had a few years there in between where. You know, we we work with a with a crew of guys, and, and uh, just it, it's nice if you just find some place to fall in and work together on it. If you're by yourself, it's it's quite a little harder to make it out here. I mean, you can, but it's the key is to get paid, and if you can get paid sooner, it just makes it a little bit better. Yeah, that's a pretty good tip there. I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt this interview, but is that big rig on videos I hear back there? Yes, sir, that's me. Man, I just gotta say, man, I love your videos, man. I love your interviews, man. Keep up the good job there, man. We all love watching your stuff on YouTube, man. I gotta give my, tip my hat to you, man. We do appreciate all you do out there. You're welcome, sir. We appreciate you, too, getting up and down the road. We need all you guys out there. So, uh, I appreciate you guys, too. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you all get back down for and I'm enjoying listening to y'all. Go for it. Yeah, we'll see what happens with this administration. I'm not looking forward to what I think he's got planned for us. I think we're on the I think we're on the verge of having some inflation, especially in the trucking business. He's kind of against the fuel guys and I think they're gonna figure out some way of getting that pushed up a little bit higher than what it's been. She fuel's been kinda nice here for the last few years, but I've noticed it's going up more and more all the time, but 
We'll play the game just like everybody else does. Somebody's got to do the work out here. That's the key. Right. You know, that, that whole change here over the last month or so, it's been a confusing one. And, and to, to keep it, uh, generally speaking, just like you said, somebody's got to somebody's got to get out and work and, and move the freight. And uh, right now, uh, that's going to take some fossil fuel to get that done. So it just doesn't make sense uh, to, to mess around with that particular you know subset of the industry there. I really think what would really help the situation out out here is if they could actually find a transportation secretary that had to do the job. That way, everybody's kind of got a a pretty good idea that the guy that they put in there is on our side because it doesn't feel like that right now. Right, you're absolutely right. And there, there's no, it seems like there's no uh, uh, representation that way to, uh, to to really make things work. Yeah, we'll see what happens. You got to kind of keep the faith. A good friend of mine, Clyde Green, always tells me that. You got to keep the faith, and there's a lot of truth to that. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a sexy rear door southbound. Appreciate it, bud. Thank you. Speaking of sexy rigs there, uh, I'm sure there's some some parts there, some custom parts that you put on this here rig, uh, Heath. Uh, why don't you share uh, some of the, the parts, the brand names or whatnot uh, behind the stacks and bumper and visor and lights and all that other good stuff? Well, it's funny you say that because the day that you met me, I was picking up a lot of the stuff for this truck there at four states. I guess we, we put some dual headlights on here and uh, valley chrome bumpers front and back the WTI fenders were bought there four states got those painted and put on oh I'm trying to think what else um, there's a lot of custom stuff on here I think uh, most of the stainless was done by a friend of ours in Sioux Falls South Dakota um, there's a deck pad that was made in El Paso Texas down there across from the Petro, and uh, just trying to think what else. Well, there's quite a bit of it is uh, was just a lot of paint work. Barry's Body Shop in Rockville, Wisconsin. He uh, reskinned, repainted the truck, helped put the windows in the sleeper, and and uh, I guess as far as the, the really cool stuff, like I said, Travis and Two Bees did the custom interior in here. Other than that, it's just been like since 04, picking up little doodads here and there, putting on it. Well, you've got some good doodads on there. It looks good. Uh, what you've done with it, it's, that's great, man. Uh, like I said before, it's a real standout truck. Uh, but I don't need to tell you that, though. Well, it's still nice to hear it every once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't catch me clean this time. I happened to have the old A model washed up that day that I seen you there in Missouri. Well, that's how we know that the truck works, man. We gotta see some dirt on it every once in a while there, right? You're gonna get to see more than that. This truck's about all I've ever done with it is job sites. I'm gonna uh, go to two of them today down here right outside of Tampa. And, and uh, then we'll turn around and go to a pole yard where there's plenty of orange dirt up there in Alabama to get all over it. And uh, we'll take those REA poles back to another dirt yard there in Hillsboro, Texas, and we'll get to start all over. Yeah, I heard that. Five hours later.
So Heath, you made it to uh, your deliveries and you got all empty there and clean. Uh, and here we are headed back north on 75. Uh, how, uh, how's Florida treating you so far? I love coming to Florida. I've always loved coming down here. I'd, I used to be leased onto an outfit out in South Dakota. And I ran two rounds a month down to Ocala, Florida. And, and uh, I don't know, I've, I've always liked coming down here. And four. Now, uh, earlier we talked about a bunch of stuff, and one of the things that I wanted to ask you is, uh, you know, who do you got at the house uh, back there uh, that's got you back and helping uh, with some things? Uh, my wife, Jay Lynn, she works out of the house, and she runs a small embroidery business, watches over our small place, and then she helps book loads, bills loads, and, and uh, all the ins and outs whatever we got going on at the office with the truck and deal and she'll come with me every once in a while and deliver a load if it's local or something like that we've been happily married for a long long time love her to death it's great to have uh you know folks back at the house you know wives uh, family and uh that help keep things running while the guys are out there on the road yeah she'll uh she'll even grab some wrenches every once in a while she'll meet you in the middle under the truck <laughs> If you know what I mean. Well, that's cool. So, you know, Heath, I'm going to put you on the spot. You know, I've, I've been doing this filming for a while, and I've done a couple of these Roland CB interviews. Uh, I think there's upwards of 100 or more. And, uh, you know, according to what YouTube says and all those statistics, yours is ranked number one with uh, uh, a little over 3 million views. How do you feel about that? I guess I really don't know what to say. I guess there's a lot of people that got some time on their hands and they like what you do. I think that's a, I think that should be a congratulations to what you do. I, I couldn't have videoed that, and put that together like you did. So I, everybody's good at something, and you just happen to be very good at this. It's a lot of fun getting out here and meeting folks, and you know, you and I we met uh, randomly there at, uh, at uh, G Bats. Or, and it wasn't even G Bats. It was just there at uh, at Four State Trucks, and uh, yeah, I just enjoy enjoy doing what I do. And um, at the time, you mentioned that you know, technology wise, um, you're happy with a flip phone, and I might be ribbing you a little bit, but it, it, it you got to see the video because again, uh, what, what was your impression of seeing your truck going down the road? I guess it's, I think it's something that a lot of guys like to see. I mean, I'm an owner operator. So this is what I do for a living, and I'm just one guy out here. And it's, you kind of, you, you want to take pride in what you do. And I think there's a lot of guys out here that still do that. I think there's still, a, there's even some young guys I've seen that, that are just as old school as the way it was when I started. I mean, I'm, I'm not the greatest mechanically, but as far as driving, I've, I've always seen to try to get the job done. And, and I stay pretty busy doing it. But I, well, the first time that you see your truck on a video like that, it's like, golly, that's pretty neat right there. And then, you know, you, you always, <laughs> well, it's a double-edged sword. There's always somebody that's going to say something or whatever, and you, you can't really take it to heart. But I, I've told a lot of guys, I said, it, it's kind of one of them things that it makes you kind of proud of what you do in a way. And in and, and another way, like you know you got a long ways to go and, and you never stop you never stop picking up on things out here so it's I mean I've met a lot of friends out here some of the guys that I work with I mean they they uh, we work hand in hand together and I'm not I'm, like I said I'm I'm just one guy out here trying to make a living just like everybody else I'm no better no worse than the next guy but I try to do everything the right way make a living and along the way you meet some people that uh, it gets to be a small world, just like when we were back there washing the truck. You helped me towel dry it off. There was a guy from Balga, South Dakota. It's a small world. I mean, he knew quite a few of the people that I grew up around up there. It kind of makes it a, you never know what's going to happen out here. Yeah, you got that right. And, you know, hats off to all the other guys that leave their house, leave their family, and they get out there. You never know what's going to happen. You meet good friends, like you said. 
and sometimes you got some hurdles to, 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 to jump over. But and then if so, then you got folks that'll you know help you get over those hurdles. So yeah, it's good times for sure. You never know who you're gonna run into out here, and it's kind of one of them deals like it. And uh, you'll meet some guys for the first time, and man, you'll you'll think, man, these guys got it going on. And the next time you see them, things ain't going so well for them. I mean, that happens to everybody out here. So this is the most humbling job you'll ever have. It's the it's the only job I know of. You can get up every morning and you get penalized for wanting to work hard. That's that's the hard part of it. Wow, that's a good point. Never, ever, ever heard anyone say it that way. Getting penalized for wanting to go to work and do a good job. Yeah, they got a lot of rules. <laughs> I guess we're supposed to follow them. So tell me about those uh, those shapes in your sleeper. Uh, the heart-shaped windows. Are those windows? Yeah, we got them covered up with the, with the interior and everything, but... I, uh, my other truck got hard windows in it, and man, we we looked all over. We put the back window in, so it's kind of nice to be able to look back there and see if something's going on once in a while. I've been attached to hard windows as long as I've been trucking, and I just couldn't seem to find another set to go in here. So when we were redoing the sleeper, we decided just to make a set, and we had a stainless steel trim ring put on, and they're glued in, and they. They turned out pretty nice, really. I, I was skeptical at first. They're they're definitely not double eagle windows, but it uh, it looks it looks all right to me. Just all right, you say? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> all right, it looks pretty nice there, sir. It looks real good. We try to take care of it. I mean, we just we kind of got got it redone and. Kind of got in a mess up there with it, but we'll get her all fixed back up again. That's what I do. I build them and I tear them up, and then we piece them back together again. We're good at it. Well, no one can't say that you'd never work your truck there, right? I'd, I'd like to be able to keep one nice and just put it in the shop all the time, but it seems like they're both going every which direction. It seems like one of them needs something, you jump in the other one, and when my dad was around, they, they both went passed away this year we we hated losing him because i i missed him terribly i just i wish he was still around to go trucking with but i still got the memories of all that the, you know we we spent a lot of time together we were we were in business for 28 years together so there's a lot to be said for that man well sorry about that you know i hate to hear that uh, where anybody lose a family member much less you know something that they work close with or uh, I don't even want to say mentor. I mean, let's go back a, a step. What was the relationship like, you know, growing up, you know, with your dad? You know, did you see him trucking every day or and you go trucking with him? Or, you know, what was that like? Man, he was like John Wayne to me. He always has been. We were, he wasn't just my dad. We were best friends. And I, when I started, when I started this business, I, I brought him into it. We were, we were both working in town at that time, and, and he drove for another company, and I, we started building fences, how we got started doing this, and then we ended up buying the trucks to get us through the winter, because when you're up north, it, it gets cold in the winter time, and you don't want to build fence, and then there's a lot of snow, so we bought them to kind of compensate everything, and, and uh, I guess the way it all worked out is, you know, 28 years later, we had a couple trucks and trailers put together, and in the winter time, he he liked to go kind of get away from the place a little bit, and see the country, and then still go do the job. And I I know it, it was disheartening for him when when e logs came along. He didn't he didn't want to get involved in any of that. And uh, we ended up putting a couple of old motors back in the truck so that we wouldn't have to play that game. And he he just got tired of all the rules and regulations. I think he just had enough of it. Yeah, I don't blame him one bit. It looks like Mr. Jeremy Williams over there heading southbound. You got her all flicked up. Good morning, Mr. Church. Doing pretty good. How are you getting along? Yeah, you looking good. 
Sir, you too. You got a couple of them sitting in the middle going southbound there, and they're looking at your gas can when you go by. Come on. Oh, you know me, I got a buggy for one thing. Uh, what does what that Jake break sound like there? Well, I'll, I'll let you hear it. Sounds good, sir. I'll just go ahead and uh, say it's been a pleasure running into you again, you know, always. And, uh,. <laughs> we'll see where the next random place will be that I run into yet. <laughs> yeah, don't be a stranger. Yeah.